So I usually preach till somebody falls out the window, but uh, here I think I'll change that and go you want, you for 15. No. Nah, it's okay, brother. We're, we're fine here. No problem. Okay, Luke chapter 8. I want to read to you a little story about the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, Luke chapter 7. Excuse me. Luke chapter 7. And we often hear that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves us, we could say. And that's quite true, and a lot of verses in the Bible say that. But I want to ask you tonight, how much do you love Jesus? How much do I love Jesus? I can ask the question to myself as well. Luke chapter 7, I'll read at verse 36 and following. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet, and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him. For she is a sinner. And we'll see how the Lord Jesus responded to that. Now, we know what this woman was. This woman was a sinner. The Holy Spirit tells us that in the Bible, in the narrative, the introduction to the story. He says there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. And Simon, the man who had this house, who invited the Lord Jesus to dinner, he knew who this woman was too. She probably had a bad reputation. You know, every community has people like that. Men and women, sometimes young people, that they say, oh, they're into all kinds of bad stuff. They've made a mess of their life with sin. And Simon knew that she was a sinner. The problem was that while he was sitting there, he was looking at the Lord Jesus, and he was passing judgment on the woman, and he was passing judgment on the Lord Jesus as well. He had already determined, this woman's a sinner. What does that mean? Well, that means to him, she doesn't belong here. She shouldn't come into my house. And that means to him, nobody respectable ought to let her touch him. And he judged the Lord Jesus, didn't he? He said, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what this woman was. He wouldn't let this woman touch him. Why? Well, because in his mind, obviously, righteousness, being accepted by God, was how you look on the outside. Now, that's a very big mistake. Because the Bible tells us, for instance, in 1 Samuel 16, 7, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Okay? We can look at people, and we can form judgments very quickly. And I'm thankful that God doesn't do that that God goes right to what we are in our heart. On the one hand, it's very encouraging because when we're misunderstood by other people and maybe misjudged by other people, we can say, well, God, you know who I really am. And what's more, you created me, so you know everything about me. And what's more, even though I am a sinner, the Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And isn't that wonderful? Being a sinner doesn't mean you can't come to Jesus. Because if that were the case, if Jesus said, sinners need not apply. Please don't come to me if you're a dirty old sinner. Guess how many people would come to Jesus if the Lord Jesus didn't receive sinners? Zero. Not the three fingers up top. I mean the round here. Zero. None of us. Because the Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now the problem with this man Simon was, he was obviously comparing himself with her. And saying she's a sinner, but I'm a good person. I mean, after all, I've invited this rabbi, this religious teacher, Jesus, to my house. And I'm giving him some of my food. And so, I'm a good person. 
and I can pass judgment on this woman, a sinner, and what's more, I can pass judgment on Jesus. You know, there are people in our world that still do that today. They look at the Lord Jesus, and they say, well, I don't think there's anything to Jesus. I don't think he can help me. I don't think he can make my life better. In fact, I want to have a lot of fun in this world, and he would only get in the way. So they form a judgment about Jesus. They say, if I let Jesus into my life, my life will be ruined. When it's just the opposite. We're very good at ruining our own lives. And I could tell you story after story of friends of mine and family members and people I grew up with who've ruined their lives through turning away from the Lord Jesus. They grew up in a place not dissimilar from this. They came to youth group like you are. They heard the word of God. They sang the songs. But they made a judgment about Jesus Christ. They said, he's not for me. I can point you to other friends of mine that I grew up with and other people in my family, thank God, who came to the Lord Jesus and said, my Lord and my God, save me a sinner. See, I'm so glad you received sinners, Lord, because there wouldn't be any place for me if you didn't receive sinners. Now think about what this woman did. She came and stood behind the Lord. She wasn't bold and come right up. Hey, Jesus, you should be glad to receive me because I'm cool. I'm all that, you know? I'm the best looking woman around here. Now she wouldn't even come in front of him. She's standing behind him and she's weeping. And she doesn't care who sees it. You know how hard that is to be vulnerable when you're hurting, when your heart has been broken, when you've had such struggles in life and you just cry for the pain of it and you say, I hurt so badly, I don't even care who sees. But this woman wasn't hurting. This woman was crying tears of gratitude. She was thankful because she knew the Lord Jesus was the Savior. And she was like some of you ladies, if you don't mind me saying here tonight. She had lovely long hair. I love long hair. Okay? Now, I have plenty of lady friends uh, and, and my own mother who their hair is not so long. So I like them too. Okay? Don't get the wrong impression. But in 1 Corinthians 11, even God says in that chapter that the hair is given to the woman for her glory. And she took what was her glory, symbolically at least, and she said, I'm going to use that like a towel on Jesus' feet. Now imagine that. You all got plenty of sand here in Spanish Wells, right? And if you're wearing flip-flops or sandals or even these Crocs I'm wearing tonight, and you've been out on the beach and you come back, or even you've been walking in some streets, and you kick off your shoes and you look at your feet, how do they look? Are you ready to be? Yeah. Are you ready to be on a commercial? Are you ready to say, hey, baby, check out my feet? <laughs> you say, no. You say, no, I, I got to wash my feet before anybody sees them. Or maybe you're like some people I know, you got toe fungus, you know, and you don't want to show people your feet. And, no, I'll just wear my wetsuit booties today. Thank you very much at the beach and so forth and so on. You know, feet aren't the nicest part of our body. And in the days of the Lord Jesus, I, I actually at one stage lived in Israel for a little time. And Israel is a dusty country, at least in Jerusalem and that area and parts of Galilee as well. And so I would walk around and man, by the end of the day, even in tennis shoes, my socks would be just cruddy, nasty. And you think this woman's willing to get down at the feet of Jesus and weep and kiss his feet and wipe them with her hair. Now, why would that woman do that? Well, she was so grateful, so thankful. She wanted to just say, Jesus, you can have the best I have. Why would she say that? Well, Simon looked at her and he misjudged her. She's a sinner. He shouldn't let her touch him. Because he had the idea that if a sinner touched Jesus, Jesus would become morally defiled. In other words, he'd be spiritually dirty. That he would become sinful like that person. But that's the wonderful thing about the Lord Jesus. We sang it in some of those songs. That the Lord Jesus cleanses us from sin. For the sinner to touch the Lord Jesus doesn't make Jesus dirty. It makes us clean. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, 
cleanses us from all sin, says 1 John 1, 7. And the Lord Jesus said, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. And the Lord told him a story. There were two people that owed money. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. Now, both of these apparently were large sums of money. But obviously, one guy owed 500 and one guy owed 50. And the guy who was the creditor, the guy who had lent the money, he freely forgave them both. So Jesus asked him, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who forgave him more. Because if you've been forgiven the 50, well, you're happy, right? You're like, cool, I don't have to pay that back. But maybe that it's 50, you're thinking, well, if I get some extra jobs, you know, if I go out fishing someday and I get a really good catch, or if I invest in the stock market, or if I win the lottery, or who knows how people think they can make a lot of money in earn. Maybe someday I can pay that debt. But the guy who owes 500, he says, you know what? That's a fortune, millions of dollars in our money. And you could give me hundreds of years, and I couldn't pay that debt. I'm a debtor who can't pay the debt. Now, the reality is, the guy who owed 50, he also couldn't pay the debt. Neither one could pay, Jesus said. But who's going to love the Lord Jesus more? What's well, the one who is forgiven more? And the Lord Jesus then explains it. He says, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You didn't even do the basic nice thing you'd do for any guest that came to your house to me. But she's washed my feet with her hair and her tears. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, so again, Jesus isn't saying she's not as bad as you think. She's not really a sinner. No, he's saying she has many sins. Agree. She's a sinner. But that's exactly why I came, to forgive sins. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Now, in actual fact, was Simon very different from that woman? Outwardly, yes. You wouldn't look at him and think, oh, there's a sinner. I mean, he was a Pharisee. He was a religious man. He was at their version of church every week, the synagogue, every week. And people would say, oh, that's a really religious man. But when it came down to it, he didn't have any love for the Lord Jesus. He didn't have any love for the Son of God. The Son of God came to his house, and he was rude to the Lord Jesus. And he judged the Lord Jesus badly. But that woman who was a sinner, she came and said, I don't care who thinks what of me. I can come to the Lord Jesus and I can worship him. I can bow at his feet. I can put my glory in the dust. I can give him my best because I love him. Why do I love him? Because my sins, which are many, have been forgiven by him. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now we know the Lord Jesus who forgives sins. He is the Son of God. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the one who offered himself as a sacrifice for sin on the cross. He rose again from the dead. And guess what? He's coming back again, coming for his church but also coming back after the rapture later to judge the world in righteousness, the Bible says. So he is the judge. Now, if the judge tells you you're free, you're forgiven, are you free? Well, she believed it, and she could go out free. She could go out and say, I love Jesus. Why do you love the Lord Jesus? I love him because all my sins, so great so many, in his blood are washed away. Because Jesus loved me and gave himself for me. Now let me ask you. You've heard it from the time you were knee-high to a comforter. That Jesus loves you. And I want to tell you, Jesus does love you. The Son of God, the Lord of heaven and earth, 
loves you more than anyone else could possibly love you, more than your parents or grandparents, more than any of your friends, more than anybody you'll ever meet, the Lord Jesus loves you. But the question is, do you love him? Are you of that attitude where you say, yes, I know what I am. I'm a sinner. And but for the Lord Jesus, if he hadn't died for me and risen again for me, I'd go to hell. But I have eternal life. And I love the Lord. And I want to worship the Lord. Is that your attitude tonight? I don't need an answer. It's really a question for you to answer in your own heart before God. And may each of us be helped to say, yes, I love him because he first loved me. Father, we're thankful for each of these young people, and we pray indeed that they grasp how much was given to save them, that the best person in the universe laid down his life as a sacrifice to buy them because he wants them, because he loves them that much, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We just pray each and every one here would not only know that in theory, not only know that in their head, know it as a fact of history, but they know it in their heart because they know that Jesus has forgiven them based on their faith in him. We pray this in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Keith. Yeah, I had no